Welcome back to the Bluffton News. With me now is Andrea Vastis, and she is the Senior Director of Public Education for the National Fire Association. And we're going to talk about fire prevention and things that are going on. We've already had our Fire Prevention Week this month, but it's never too, we, we always want to talk about it some more. So Andrea, thank you for being here. Tell us a little bit about this year's theme. Thank you so much for having me. And, and yes, Fire Prevention Week technically ended on the 9th. However, all month long, there are so many things going on. And, and this year's theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, really grew out of what we saw during the pandemic. We had a lot of teachers letting us know that they were hearing the chirp of a low battery and the smoke alarm in the background. Um, sometimes they even heard the smoke alarm or a carbon monoxide alarm go off. And too many times people just didn't know what to do in that moment when the alarm or the chirp was happening. Okay, and so we are going to learn all about those those uh, sounds this year. And so what should people take into account when they're hearing their alarms, when they're hearing those chirps? What do they need to do? Well, and that's really it. Chirp, we say like to say chirp means change. So if there's a chirp, it's time for a change of batteries. Or if your alarm is 10 years or older, it's time for an entirely new alarm. And so that's important to just think of chirp means change. Then the other thing is about the when the alarm is actually going off. And so a smoke alarm has a consistent three beeps, beep, 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 beep. That means there is smoke or fire and it is time to get out, stay out and go to your meeting place. And that is just so important. Don't go around your house thinking what's going on, where is the fire? Get out, stay out, call 911 and go to your meeting place, which is really a really critical piece of responding to an alarm to make sure that if people are going out different exits, they all are accounted for at that meeting place. And we're gonna get to that, uh, talking about an escape plan in just a second. But before we do, let's talk a little bit about installing alarms and how, you know, if people need help with that, how can they get help to know, make sure that they're doing it correctly, they're getting the right alarm for their home, those kinds of things. Absolutely. Well, so there are a few considerations to think of. And one of the things is, is there anyone in your home who is deaf or hard of hearing? Because now, um, even for people who have cochlear implants or wear hearing aids, when they're sleeping, they're not in. And so you need to make sure that when you're considering your smoke alarms, one in each bedroom, one on each level and outside of sleeping areas, and for carbon monoxide alarms, just one on each level, thinking about who might not be able to hear that alarm. And so there are strobe light alarms that you can install that will flash really brightly while going off. And then there are bedside alarms that will actually flash, speak, and shake your bed. Wow. And so it's important that for people who have hearing loss or who are deaf or hard of hearing, have those things in place. And then the other thing to think about is if you need help, you can always call your local fire department or fire marshal's office. Many times they'll have a smoke alarm installation program. They can help you. And if you can't afford alarms, they can often get them for you. Excellent. And so let's go back to talking about that escape plan that you mentioned earlier. I know it's really important to have one. Tell us how, you know, the best way to go about creating one of those with your family. So uh, we actually uh, have them on our website. So on firepreventionweek.org, uh, you can actually get one uh, or on sparky.org. And so basically you're making a map of your home and you're planning two ways out of each room and two ways out of your house. You can't always assume that you'll always be able to get out the front door. And it's important that everyone in your home understands that um, where they can go and how, it, how important it is. Today's homes burn faster and hotter. The materials in the fabrics, in the lightweight construction, you may have as little as two minutes to get out from the sound of that alarm. And so everybody needs to know that way out. Everybody needs to go to that meeting place. You don't want anybody running back in thinking someone's still in. That's actually an, an, an unfortunate, tragic uh, set of events that often happens too often. And uh, have, the, have the map, have the plan, test it twice a year. And that's really important. Have your, you have fire drills in school, have fire drills at home. Excellent advice. Thank you, Andrea, so much for being with us. It was very important information, and we appreciate you sharing it. Have a great day. Really appreciate this. Coming up, we'll check out a ribbon cutting with Robin Zimmerman. Stay with us.